Okay, I'd like to call to order the Township of Can uh, Council meeting for Tuesday, September 6th. If we could please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. have um, some certificates of recognition that we're going to be giving out this evening. I think Mr. Gillespie, you have our first one. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Yes, I do. Uh, certificate of recognition recognizing David Nathan David Pintar on his outstanding achievement in attaining the rank of Eagle Scout. Whereas Nathan David Pintar is the recipient of the highest scouting award, Eagle Scout, in honor of this achievement, a court of honor is scheduled for September 11, 2022. And whereas the Boy Scouts of America is a vital force in the development of our youth throughout its many programs, which encourage the ability of its members to do things for themselves and especially for others. One of the major objectives in the scouting program is to develop citizenship through community involvement. And in addition to working for citizenship merit badges, scouts are encouraged to participate in community service projects. And whereas, due to his care for environmental conservation, Nathan's community service project included the planting of 56 donated trees, 30 service berry and 26 <coughs> spruce at the Newland Grist Mill in Concord Township. To accomplish his project, he raised $450 to fund the fencing and wire needed to protect the new plantings. And he led 21 scouts and 20 adults for a total of 235 volunteer hours to clear the planting area and plant the trees. The completion of this project helped restore the forest area decimated by the ash borer and establish the park boundary from an adjacent neighborhood. As of June 2022, all serviceberry trees have bloomed and all, all of the trees have shown significant new growth. And whereas Nathan David Pintar of Troop 260 has proven himself to be an outstanding member of the Boy Scouts of America, having served as patrol leader, bugler, and troop guide, the Eagle Scout Award is a distinction that will follow him throughout his life. Therefore, be it resolved that the Concord Township Council congratulates Nathan on being the recipient of the highest scouting award, Eagle Scout, and encourages him to continue his commitment to excellence. To have passed and approved this sixth day of September 2022, Township Council. John, that's in the form of a motion? Yes, sir. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Nathan, if you would come up, we'd like to thank you. reminded me on the way out to say that we met in executive session to discuss some real estate issue prior to the meeting and I forgot so I'm doing it now so we're covered thanks John um, item number two is a proclamation recognizing first responders day Benita thank you mr. president whereas per act 87 of 2021 the Pennsylvania General Assembly and Governor Wolf designated September 27th of each year as First Responders Day in Pennsylvania. And whereas our first responders, who are the police, fire, emergency medical services, and public health personnel, 
work selflessly on behalf of the people of this Commonwealth, regardless of the risk or hazard, and truly are citizens serving the community. And whereas first responders carry out the critical role of protecting and ensuring public safety in emergency situations. And whereas first responders make personal sacrifices to protect our communities as witnessed in the aftermath of the terrorist attacks of September 11, 2002, and of the natural destruction caused by Hurricane Katrina, Irene, and Sandy. They are called every day to protect individuals and property in cities and towns across this Commonwealth. And whereas thousands of first responders have made the ultimate sacrifice. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Council of Concord Township does hereby proclaim September 27th as First Responders Day and recognizes the dedicated professionalism shown by these men and women every day, passed and approved this day of September 2022. Benita, that is in the form of a motion, I assume? I so move. And do we have a second? Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, Amanda, you will make sure this gets passed on to our first responders? Or? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I figured she wasn't here because it was quiet. But anyway, um, item number three, Colleen. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, it's my honor and pleasure to recognize Manos Cavadeus for his service to Concord Township. After 20 years of service to Concord Township, uh, Manos will be retiring as the Zoning and Code Enforcement Officer for Concord Township. He's provided more than 20 years of exemplary services to the residents of Concord Township and will be retired or retired as of August 31st, 2022. I'd like to publicly recognize and thank Mr. Cavadillos for his many years of dedicated service and professionalism to the residents of Concord Township, ensuring public safety through his enforcement of building codes for the citizens of Concord Township. Um, it is my motion that Concord Township Council acknowledge and recognize the outstanding work, dedication, and commitment demonstrated by Mr. Manos Cavadillos and wishes him the best of luck in his future endeavors in retirement. Okay, do we have a, that's a motion? Well, well, nobody voted on it yet, don't worry about it. <laughs> I, get, I didn't count the votes on this one, man. But anyway, <laughs> um, that's a motion, do we have a second? Second. Uh, before we go any further, um, I was here when we hired Mano, and it was a great day for Concord Township, and it's been a great experience working with Mano. And when you work with people that long, you not only work coworkers, but they become your friends. I will miss you, my friend. Best wishes in the future. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, do we have a, take a picture with that or do yeah. we have the resolution? We have a resolution regarding America 250 PA. Mr. Crossan. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the Pennsylvania General Assembly and Governor Wolf created a Pennsylvania Commission for the United States Sesquicentennial um, in 2018 to encourage, develop, and coordinate the commemoration of the 250th anniversary of the United States in 2026 and Pennsylvania's role in that event and the impact uh, on the nation, past, present, and future. And, uh, it's 
there will be a lot of events to engage uh, citizens throughout the Commonwealth and celebrate um, our history. And uh, so this resolution is um, it, that Concord Town, the, Con the Council of Concord Township does hereby endorse and support America 250 PA and its mission to educate, preserve, innovate, and celebrate the rich history and diversity of this state. Um, and that a uh, copy of this resolution be sent to the Township State Senator, Representative, and PSETS, noting our support of this effort. So, Mr. President, I so move. Do we have a second? Yes, second. All those in favor, please sing and privately say aye. 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 Upcoming meetings and events. On September 9th, we have the Sidewalk Picasso and Sand Art Competition at 530. I assume that's at the Smith Bridge Road Park? On the next day, September 10th, we have Concord Community Day beginning at 4 p.m. with fireworks at dusk. September 14th, Historical Commission meeting. September 19th, Planning Commission meeting. September 21st, Zoning Hearing Board meeting. September 24th, Concord on the Move, a bird walk at the Phipps Farm, 8, 8 a.m. The Phipps Farm is uh, the corner of um, Temple, Temple and Smith. Okay. All right. Uh, that's right. That, I call it the Coleman track. Yeah, yeah I got to still. You, got, you renamed all this stuff for the old timers. September 27th is the council agenda meeting uh, as needed. Uh, reports, public safety, Vanita. Thank you, Mr. President. Good evening, everybody. The fire marshal's report this month reported 227 emergency medical service requests. We have lowered our accidental false alarm, which is positive. There were two fire events this month, uh, last month related to a summer cooking grill and debris in a commercial zone. Last month, we also received a report from PSP that a business entity uh, named Healing Day Spa has been shut down. The investigation by PSP is ongoing. Anybody has any specific questions, you may contact PSP. The safety tip for this month, again, will focus on the fall safety. Um, one of the most important things is schools began today, was the first day of school. Be cautious to back to school traffic in our township. Get your fire safety up to speed, especially your furnace and heaters that have been sitting untouched all summer long. Inspect and maintain them all. Make sure your batteries are in order regarding house fires, which are common in fall because of the change of temperature and the fact that people are turning on their heaters after months of inactivity. Make sure you change the batteries, replace them, uh, especially in your smoke detectors, carbon monoxide detectors, and other important emergency uh, devices. A couple of months ago, we had received a petition from Sharpless Farm Development seeking new traffic calming measures on Spring Valley Road, requesting the township engineer to review that portion of the roadway. We are currently exploring different options to alleviate and increase safety and would request Nate uh, to update with his engineering report um, on where we are at in regards to the Spring Valley Road. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next is open space trails and recreations, Mr. Crossan. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we've had a fantastic summer of events and things um, are coming to uh, their conclusion this, this weekend at the community day. Lots of exciting things happening there, um, including some of the items that we had to sort of reschedule from early in the summer. So we'll have some great um, uh, presentations and uh, by groups in our community. And um, the there will be opportunities at community day to sign, for residents to sign up to participate in both fall and spring cleanups at our park. So we're starting to organize um, opportunities for residents to, um, to help support our parks. Uh, so those will be focused primarily on Phipps Farm, which as you noted is the old Coleman track there next to Fox Hill Farm, as well as on the trails um, here on the township campus leading down to the grist mill. One note uh, is that the dog park at Smithbridge Park will be closed for eight weeks beginning um, in mid-September for reseeding. Uh, as folks who use that park know, um, the grass has be become a little on the uh, weathered side um, and it becomes a bit of a mud pit. And so we have, uh, we're, we're using this fall uh, to reseed that and uh, residents can use uh, the designated dog areas over at Bush Hill Farm. 
in the meantime. Uh, and two exciting notes, um, but really one is that we just received word that we received uh, two DCNR grants uh, for our parks. Uh, these are 50% matches. Town Concord Township will be receiving $178,000 uh, and $200 for a park, pocket park over on Beaver Valley Road. Uh, this was the property where the old log cabin was that we worked with the grist mill to relocate. And we'll be receiving $218,500 for improvements to Smithbridge Park as well. And these will be uh, improvements to the entrance as well as uh, the parking lot, uh, at lighting, et cetera. Not the sexiest improvements that uh, we, we might do at the park, but certainly ones that will help to facilitate folks' uh, use of the park and enjoyment. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Soaring Public Works, Mr. Gillespie. Yes, uh, thank you. I have a report from our uh, assistant manager. The month of August, operations staff performed 10 lateral inspections for resale certification. The sewer department responded to 186 individual Pennsylvania one call notification for sewer lines to be marked in planned work zones. And all components of the main lift and EQ pump replacement project are installed and operating as designed. The project is now 100% complete. The project included technological up system upgrades that are being impl implicated throughout the township's wastewater treatment system. And engineering work continues for the Cambridge Smithbridge sewer project and the Millrace water wheel sewer project. And letters were mailed to homeowners included in the Concord Road North project area regarding some final survey work needed to complete the bidding plans. Additionally, 12 daily and weekly procedures have been completed and 13 additional projects completed and one new employee has been added to the department. On the public work side, seven monthly highlights. The highlight of the month was over at Spring Valley Road where a pipe replacement project was completed with end walls, saving considerable funds by utilizing township employees rather than going through the public bidding process. And also 18 daily and weekly procedures. Very active month for both sewer and public works department. Thank you. Building and code, Colleen. Thank you, Mr. Ch Mr. President. Um, well, Mr. Cavadeos' last report here showed a pretty significant um, increase in August of 89 total permits compared to 64 back in 2021. That included 24 building permits, 16 plumbing permits, 18 mechanical permits, 23 electrical permits, one fire code permit, two zoning permits, and one massage permit, and four solicitation permits. Um, we had 20 residential resale certifications in the month of August and one commercial certification and 33 certificates of occupancy issued. So it was a, a very busy, busy month in, in that department. We also have several new businesses that opened. Um, Spread Bagelry in the Glen Eagle Shopping Center opened during the month. Story a Move um, is either open or planning to be open very soon. Precision, Precision Maintenance and Gate LLC on Baltimore Pike and holistic canine solution on Conchester Road. Um, so it's good to see some businesses moving in as well. Thank you. Planning Commission, Larry. Thank you, Dominic. Um, Concord Township Planning Commission activities for August 2022. The Planning Commission agenda meeting was held on August 8th, 2022, and the public meeting was canceled for August 15th. Scheduled for the month, the agenda meeting will be held on September 12th, and the public meeting will be held on September 19th. That's it for planning. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Donahue, your solicitor report, please. Thank you. I'm requesting that council, requesting that council uh, authorize the township manager to advertise uh, and also establish a date for a public hearing on non-tower based small wireless communication facilities. And the purpose is to regulate the placement, design, construction, modification, maintenance, and removal of non-tower based wireless communication facilities and systems 
and to establish uniform standards for the siting, design, camouflaging, permitting, maintenance, and use of such facilities in Concord Township in order to protect the health, safety, and property of township residents. So, so if council would entertain a motion. I, I think we, uh, we already have that in the lineup. Amanda said we had did not done that at a previous uh, meeting. Yep. And we will probably try to hit that in September or October in conjunction with some other meetings we're going to be having. Fair okay. enough. Next item is solar facilities. And in light of recent federal and Commonwealth legislation, together with their associated subsidies, I believe it would be prudent for council to authorize the township administration and professionals to proceed with formulating a revised ordinance to address the placement, design, construction of solar facilities. Okay. Uh, Amanda, we did the one for the cell towers, but we do need to do the yep, one for Yep, for the DAS systems, you authorized an, a hearing for an ordinance for that, and Hugh was mentioning that I need to set up a date, which was his first part. And the second part, uh, we're working on an ordinance for solar to meet the new uh, needs that the state have put down, and uh, Hugh's going to be working on that, so we need okay. to authorize uh, for that. All right, do we have a motion to authorize to do so? So moved. Do we have a second? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay, good. And I may have some comments at the time of uh, public comment. Thank you. Okay. Township Engineer, Nate. Uh, good evening. I've got a lot of updates, so bear with me. Uh, first of all, as everybody's seen, pickleball has opened. Um, all the courts are currently being utilized. That project is substantially complete. Uh, as everybody knows, here at a later date, we will close the quote-unquote old courts uh, to make some patches and repairs, and then we will close the new courts to replace the um, fencing systems with the correct system. So there'll be uh, notifications by Amanda or, pa or Park and Rec at that time. Road program also substantially complete. Uh, the last thing is getting the speed humps reinstalled on Pleasant Hill. Uh, that should be scheduled for this week if it did not occur, maybe on Friday. Uh, PennDOT did authorize council's request to reduce the speed limit on Bethel Road. That will reduce it from 40 to 35. Uh, I'm just waiting for PennDOT's direction on placement and locations. Once we get that, we'll have Public Works install that. Um, the traffic calming striping at the Walnut Green neighborhood has been completed. Uh, that is Concord Crossing Road between Shavertown and Pyle. Uh, some white parallel lines were installed to help people walking through that neighborhood, as well as the um, crosswalk crossing Pyle Road to get to Bethel Township. Uh, the building repointing here at this building is scheduled to start this week. They were supposed to start today. Obviously, the rain's going to delay that. That project will go on for, for a couple months probably, uh, but we finally got that rolling, so that's good to see. Um, Concord Road Truck Study, if everybody recalls, uh, we had requested uh, with Riviera at Concord Neighborhood restrictions to trucks on Concord Road. Uh, the initial feedback from PennDOT is that is not likely. However, we have a meeting with PennDOT and Representative Williams on Thursday to discuss in more detail, so I don't want to run ahead of that just yet, but uh, we'll get more information on Thursday and I will report back on that. Um, as Vanita mentioned, uh, we have been authorized to take a second look uh, at the existing traffic calming at Sharpless Farms, that's Spring Valley Road, uh, as you come into the township from Chad's Ford to Britton Lake Road, so we will evaluate that and make some recommendations. Uh, certainly no decisions have been made, we're just looking at what the options could be for improving that stretch of road. Um, the last, I think the last two or three here, Bush Hill Farm, uh, we started our master planning for that project, and on August 4th, we had a site meeting with the steering committee, walked the site, had some uh, representatives from the neighboring area there, um, very knowledgeable people, the county, so we had that first meeting. Our next meeting is already scheduled here for the month of September. Uh, the first state connector trail, that project is going to get started here in the next few months. We are working with DCNR for authorization, and we've made contact with the National Park, who is interested in joining us on that project. The uh, last two PennDOT items are Greenlight Go Grant. We had received $140,000 from PennDOT to remove the remaining ground-based loop, dete loop detectors for traffic signals. We replace those with elevated radar detectors, helps the signals operate better. We don't get any sort of damage from utility cuts. Um, that project is also complete. We'll have those invoices for next month. And then last, we have our 202 Namens Creek project. Uh, for those that recall, we got a grant for, I believe, over a million dollars uh, where we are going to install a dual left. So going southbound on 202, you have dual lefts to go into Namens Creek Road. And then coming out of Namens Creek and coming out of Beaver Valley, you will have left turn arrows as well. Uh, so that project was awarded by PennDOT to Highway Materials Incorporated. Uh, we had our kickoff meeting on Friday. 
unfortunately, we have no start date or any other inf information just yet, but uh, we're part of that team, so we'll make sure we uh, you know, communicate that when we get that information. I think that's everything I wanted to cover. Nate, do you have any update on the uh, repaving of Baltimore Pike timing? That is on the, uh, we'll get that information on Thursday as well. Um, I feel like they're close, but I know it depends on where you drive. So um, we'll get some clarity on that on Thursday as well. Uh, Nate, I had gotten a uh, note in my mailbox from uh, my neighbors on Mill Road uh, questioning, you know, in fact, uh, made a copy of it. I don't know if it got to you, but uh, Mary Lou made a copy the other day. Oh. But they're asking us to look at, um, they think there's an inordinate amount of truck traffic that goes between, on Mill, between Thornton and um, uh, Cheney, as well as some shoulder repairs. So uh, if we can, Amanda, let yep. Maybe yeah, the, the, get that off to you, and maybe we can talk about it at a future meeting, please. Yeah, I can't speak to shoulder repairs, but I will say the truck traffic, we are already running ahead of that, is on our list of to-dos with PennDOT. Um, they are looking north in Thornbury for some additional signage. I've asked them for some recommendations for our area, too. So we're trying to hit it from a few different areas. Yeah. Um, I've also got some online programs that we're looking at maybe putting those restrictions into that might help with some of the, you know, the, the GPS-driven data the truckers are using. So. Okay. But I also think there were some shoulders that okay, might be we'll look washed at that. out over the years. We, we sometimes forget about that road. Absolutely. But that's one that is a state road, attention. no road. Okay. All right. Um, that's it. Amanda, Township Manager. Sure. Um, I would re be remiss in not saying again to Manos, congratulations on your retirement. Um, we're very excited um, for you, and thank you so much for all that you've done. Um, additionally, James is going to be stepping up, assuming uh, later on in the program here, uh, council approves James. <laughs> but uh, James is going to be our succession plan, and we're very excited, and Manus is going to be here helping with the transition uh, in the meantime, and we're going to uh, uh, continue to do great service for the township. Um, additionally, I wanted to bring up audit. So we just received the numbers from PMRS, which is our pension um, numbers, which is very important for our sewer audit, as that's an enterprise fund. And uh, we hope to have the financial statement soon, um, uh, the final financial statement soon, and then uh, possibly in October, uh, provide some information on the audit to help uh, folks understand how that goes. We, everything seems to be fantastic. So um, I'll put that out there. Um, additionally, we're coming into budget. Uh, you know, obviously, fall is budgets for municipalities in particular, and uh, in November we'll have a hearing. More information will come out. If anybody has any questions or anything on our current budget or planning, uh, feel free to reach out to me at any time. I'm happy to answer those questions and put things um, in front of council uh, when they get to making those decisions. Uh, additionally, we, um, you mentioned pickleball courts, you're finalizing punch list items. We know, I see Betty in the back, and we got, a, I think, a call today that some of the balls are coming out of the fencing. So we're going to work, that's part, of the, that's part of the punch list, and the items they already have identified that we'll be taking care of. There's a bit of a gap there. Um, but so you can tell your Gokin friends that, yes, we're aware, it's in the punch list mode, we'll take care of it. Um, and then finally, I just wanted to uh, make sure folks know uh, that we are uh, finally underway in the recodification project of our online code with general code system. And uh, Hugh and I are going to be working together um, to make sure that um, everything um, gets incorporated and updated um, uh, as it is supposed to be since the passing of the charter. It is a long project. It takes a long time with editors. And we have ordinances that have been passed that will be weaved in appropriately um, so you won't any lo longer really have to look at new laws it'll be in there so I just want to say we're working on that soon and that's going to take us probably till the end of the year for uh, to come to fruition that's all I have okay uh, citizen comment anyone with any comments on anything on the agenda or other issues before the township please come forward and we'll need your name uh, and address I just have one question. What do we decide on Watkett Avenue? Don't do it at the bottom. Uh, or the asphalt's starting to fall in the hole. Yeah, so we do. We, um, that is a regular topic of our monthly infrastructure meetings. Uh, we actually prepared a plan. Uh, we're actually looking at getting some grant money from the Conservation District to do that work. Uh, Public Works Director submitted that grant last week. Uh, so I'll try to provide an update maybe next month. 
Um, our hope is we can get that grant and Public Works can execute, uh, but we're looking at essentially re, you know, restoring that shoulder all the way down yeah. to the uh, stream area, but that's, it's moving. I don't want to give you a date yet, but if we get that grant, that'll help dictate the timing. Well, you know it's going to be a big mud pit tomorrow. Yeah, well, there's a lot. Of, uh, there's a lot on our list with the mud pit. <laughs> if we have to clean it up, we will, but yeah. uh, I think we, you saw us when we were out there that day, and that needs a total rebuild. In fact, we were looking for some of the existing documentation for some of the other lines that are there and putting this whole thing together. But I think yeah. you're hearing now the commitment is to redo it. It has to be done. It's, yeah. it's terrible. Yeah. I'm just worried because now the asphalt's starting to fall off the edge you know, with all the trucks and everything. Uh, and I'll talk to Public Works just in the interim too because I, I, I can't give you a schedule, but I'll make sure we're on top of it. The other thing is it's top of Watkin Avenue. Now with you know, with the car, care, the car company there, Enterprise, they all come out. We get a line to the top of the street that the people know, you know, don't block the whole street so we can come off of 202. You're not pulling up on his grass to get around them. Like a do not block the box? It's just like a, a yellow, one little yellow line for about 20 feet. The people come out of that place, no, get the heck over. But they pull out, they just stay in, they stay in this lane. Okay. And you're trying to pull in, you can't get in. Coming out of the um, card? Coming out of car care. The enterprise people drive around back too. So you're looking just like a double, like a yellow line down the middle of the road or something? Just like at 20 feet, right? Coming off of 202. Oh, just at the top just there. Yeah, yeah. So they know to get the heck over. I got no problem with that. Anybody else? I'll, what I'll do is Nate's next. Got a, Nate's got a brush in the car. I'm gonna do it tonight. <laughs> we'll, yeah. we'll put it on the list. Next time we do some striping, I'll pile. And I'm not gonna. We can't. We can't do that one time. But yeah. when we get some more striping work, I'll put that on the list. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. You got it. Okay. Anyone else? Need your name and address, please. Beatrice Defort, 8 Hunt Meat Lane. Okay. Um, I just have a question uh, about the dog park and suggestion. Uh, it's really nice to have a little fountain for the dogs to, that's really in the special in the summer. But how about maybe if you consider doing a hose, so in the summer, maybe when the dog go play, they're hot, we can hose them off. You know, it could be attached to that water faucet. That's a thought. And have you considered uh, maybe using turf, artificial turf instead of regular grass in the spot that seems to be getting really um, without grass, instead of having to seed every year. I, mean, I don't know if it will be cheaper in the long run. We, I just wanted to uh, suggest as far, that. As far as the hose, the hose thing or the spray, we could look into that. I'm sure there's hardware out there made specifically for dog parks for that. As far as the turf, we researched a lot of options, and I'm gonna let Nate take it. Yeah, yeah I, I will not profess to be any sort of expert in the matter, but we did look at lots of alternatives. You know, for that size, the artificial turf, A, gets costly, B has its own maintenance issues, other concerns. I th yeah, I, I think our thought was it, it's been in place for, uh, I mean, what, two, three years now, I think, at this point. I think our thought was, hey, let's give a chance of closing it down. We have another backup backup dog park. Oh. Um, let's close it down, reseed it, see if that stabilizes it. You know, if it's something we've got to grow some grass every couple of years, that's the cost of the maintenance of the dog park. We kind of knew that going in. But I think, you know, what we don't want to do is throw a bunch of mulch everywhere or a bunch oh, of... I yeah, just I think we're, we're hesitant to do anything too reactive when we think we can keep it kind of going as is in pretty good shape. Well, I agree. Mulch wouldn't be good. I was just... there. They have artificial grass just for dogs, yeah. which might be in the long run cheaper, and people that use it will be willing to spend... Probably donate to help you guys. <laughs> well, I, I think when we got the numbers, there was sticker shock. And I it was? Wanna, okay. I don't want to say this because Betty's there, but we could almost put it in more pickleball courts. Not that we're going to put it in more <laughs> pickleball courts. But anyway, it was okay. that kind of dollar. So. Okay. And the other thing we were hearing from people that had it, uh, it did the smell got to you after was, a while. Okay. So uh, every day they're inventing That's something, fair. Though, who knows? But this is what we're going to try right now. Yeah, so thank you. Comment. Thank you for your comments. Okay. Betty, did you have your hand up back there? Or were you just swatting a ball? Oh. Aww. I wish you guys had been there the day they opened the last No, we made it a point not to be, because I didn't want no, to get stampeded. You, <laughs> you should have been there that day, because I saw adults with smiles like kids have on Christmas morning. It was just <coughs> a phenomenal. So I'm sorry you weren't able to be there. But I spent two hours um, and collected tons of signatures. Oh, cool. And um, if I went back, I could give you a dozen of these. Um, players love it. They thank you so much for getting this done again. You started it in a whole other county. I mean, people come here to talk to the court. Other places are now talking about it. Wow. Um, thank you. It's changed their lives. I can't tell you how many people are fit and healthier.
even their mental health. When they can't play because they've had surgeries, they come and sit there and talk with their friends. Thank you. Well, Thank I, you. I, I, wanna, I appreciate your thanks, but on sitting up here for as many years as I've sat, this man here was well, responsible for Well, I know. John, John was our number one he, in 2011. No, John no, helped he, me he get did. this going. And he championed this thing from day one and twisted a lot of arms up here. And ultimately, when it got started, we all realized it was a great thing. So thank I thank, you, John. I thank you guys for your stuff, but I want to thank my colleague here, Mr. Gillespie. Like thank you, thank you. Amanda, you can put it in that room with all the other accolades we get. Oh, yeah. Right behind the speaker there. <laughs> plenty of space in that room. But anyway, anyone else? Guys, how are you? I haven't seen you in a while. Um, I was glad to see you folks coming on board with the 250. Um, and it is a momentous milestone, and where are we going to be from here? I think the term is set semi-sesquicentennial. There you go. Okay. <laughs> um, That's what she said. <laughs> that, was, that, that was the word caught me off guard. <laughs> <laughs> um, the pledge. I would just ask that you folks have a little more respect in your reciting of the pledge. Most of you are just practically back in your seats before you finish saying with liberty and justice for all. So for the future, um, that would be one way you can support that 250th resolution. So, yeah, well taken. Thank you. And um, from the pledge to the republic for which it stands, I want us to go to the Declaration of Independence for that republic which speaks of securing the rights of mankind by establishing governments for those purposes of preserving life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Which, by the way, that pursuit of happiness in all of the individual state documents that ratified that declaration, they expressed it, and the Pennsylvania Constitution states it very clearly, as the acquisition and protection of property, including your name and your reputation. But that's how they understood happiness. It encompassed the ownership and uh, your exercise of your rights with your property. But governments were instituted to secure those rights, and they derived their just powers from the consent of the governed. I think you would all agree with that. <clears throat> um, but fair and honest elections are the most essential and crucial element of the consent of the governed. And there has, over the last several months, I've paid close attention to the vast amount of uh, evidence that has been coming to the forefront about the massive fraud in recent elections, even prior to 2020. Delaware County has figured large on the national scene. I don't know if you're aware of it or not, but the evidence of what took place in Delaware County alone is most egregious. Um, it's a, they're astonishing violations that have occurred here. And the use of mail-in ballots and ballot boxes have figured very largely in the massive evidence that has come to light. Uh, there's not time here to go into that, but my immediate request is that Concord Township, and it's within your authority as a township board, to request, accept, or to decline, and or to withdraw a request for a ballot box in our township. I understand there has been one in these recent elections uh, in the matters that have been at, we've been dealing with over the last couple of years, but I would ask you to withdraw that, and I am happy to meet with you individually or as a whole, or as a group, or any two, three, four, five of you who are interested in knowing more of the evidence that is out there that's irrefutable um, of the way in which, and it's not just the ballot boxes. I mean, this whole interwoven electronic system from the ERIC system, which is over 31 states and handles the registration of the voters, to the CrowdStrike company that handles all of the data for Delaware County 
government, and I don't know who handles Concord Township's uh, data security. All, all our elections are handled by the Delaware County Election Board. Okay, I'm, I'm talking about the, the handles, just the entire computerized internet workings of the township government. And then uh, the electronic voting machines. Um, are, are the best way and the surest way to a fair and honest election to secure the consent of the government, which are the citizens, for the security of this republic moving forward is by paper ballots. I don't know that we're going to get there by this November, but at least I, I urge you and beg of you to not allow ballot boxes in Concord Township. That's thank, my request. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Anyone else? Global 7, Quaker Lane, um, question on the conditional use application on tonight's agenda. Is that, is that a final approval or is that just the starting, approving an application and the starting point and we'll follow up with land development and public hearings for that application? Conditional use. It's the start. It's just the acceptance it's just the of the just the acceptance for filing, moving it forward. Okay. So, that will require land development, is that correct? For a liquor license transfer? From, for a license that came to Concord Township from outside of Concord Township, a liquor license right. that is in Concord Township at address A and is transferred to address B in Concord Township does not require a conditional use hearing. That's the it's LCB. It's, it's intra, not inter. Intra, not inter. But this one's coming from, from somewhere outside. else in the county, and per the LCB, it's allowed to be transferred to Liquor Control Board, providing the municipality has a hearing and puts the conditions on it for its transfer. We most recently did that for Koi Restaurant. We've done probably eight or nine of those. So the code. It says transfer of liquor license. It doesn't say intra versus inter. Who, who's, no, code? who's code? Your code. Well, for a transfer of a liquor license, but we cannot do anything that violates the LCB. The oh, LCB. I understand. The LCB says that if Duffers wanted to sell that license to Hill Seafood, there's a Concord license in Concord, we don't have anything to say about it. But the one on tonight's agenda is inter, not intra, correct? No, it's coming from somewhere else outside of Concord Township. Is that what they call it? The liquor, the liquor license act. Not intra. Correct. Okay. So, again, your code doesn't make that delineation. Uh, Perhaps if, if the state code supersedes, does something that makes our code invalid, we defer to the state liquor control board. And even more importantly, I have a, a letter from the law firm of Donahue and Labrum, and I had this conversation with what happened at 7-Eleven Concord Road was intra within Concord Township right. was the reason there was no public hearing. Correct. The reason Mr. Donahue's firm said they didn't have to have land development, which the code requires. No. But now this one is the opposite. No, Mr. Goebbels, you're confused. There, first of all, the land development that's mentioned on tonight's agenda has nothing to do with the transfer of a liquor license from another community into Concord Township. What that has to do with is the uh, application for outdoor dining uh, at that same location. There are, there are two things to be concepted right. as complete for filing. One is a land development for Tommy's Car Wash at 119 Wilmington Pike, which is the site of the old Mars Stands furniture. I, I just asked about the- There are two conditional use applications. One, to allow outdoor dining at a restaurant. That is hearing number one, and the second for a liquor license transfer, both at the same sites. We have done them in the past. We have those same hearings on the same night. We talk about the outdoor dining and we talk about the liquor transfer. That's All right, what's so on the agenda. For the record, for I am going to submit a, a letter from Mr. Donahue's firm. I, I, I don't need it. I already saw it. I was here when we did it. When was I dated? I was, I was here. I know what that says. It says he was okay to open up. Thank you. Man. That's uh, his firm saying inter transfers. 
from Media to Concord require adherence to 210-238. Okay. Um, Concord Road North sewage. Yes. Had a, a Bradford engineer, engineer at my uh, property last week who was uh, photographs, photographing and GPS locating uh, my well. Uh, when I, you know, I asked, you know, what that had to do with the sewage line. I wasn't sure, but he thought Chester Water Authority was going to consider doubling up on the sewage trench to run public water. There will be at public water coming up Concord Road towards this complex. It will come up the Thornton Road to feed the buildings here. We do not have public water on this campus. Because I know that was on the agenda a few months ago, and uh, Amanda and I asked about it, and Amanda said no, the public water was coming from the fire department. Right. So No, you're right. I'm sorry. I'm, I apologize. I'm wrong. I'm thinking the sewer line. No, he's thinking of the sewer. Yeah. Public water is it's, so, it's happening at the same time, the project, basically. The idea was right. to bid them together I guess, and to them together. I'm just the asked. public water isn't going all the way down Concord Road, though. I, I admit my mistake. Okay. No. So... But the sewer is. And, why they, and that's why, why they, Bradford why Engineering was there. Your well, I don't know. I'd have to ask the water. Or if he was ultimately engaged by, if Bradford was ultimately engaged by Chester Water Authority. I mean, I don't know. I mean, typically, we could find in the sewage. There was a letter sent to you about it that they were coming out for G GIS purposes. Yeah, and I believe he knocked up and said, yep, I'm trying to locate everything on the property so we know exactly what's happening. The letter only referred to sewage. It didn't. Okay. Which, could also Which does, I'm not concerned right. about him right. being there or photographing. I'm just okay. wondering, is public water? Well, we'll try to find out. No, it's there. not okay. part of our project. So my other question with regards to sewage on that plan, for vacant lots, what is the township's process for whom they offer hookups to? with regards to size, specifically talked about property just the side of 7-Eleven Concord Road, is a undersized, unbuildable, axed as unbuildable parcel owned by folks at 7-Eleven. There's a similarly sized lot owned by myself, but to my knowledge, the parcel owned by 7-Eleven is on the plan for a sewage hookup, Gene Goble is not. So, I, how do you decide who, I, which I don't have the you, who you offer it to? Mr. Goble, how, how come you're aware of that, and I, who chair the sewer committee, is not aware of that? Where are you getting your information from? Uh, I guess Terry and Walt had given me a plan. This has been like it's several months, maybe even a year ago. So maybe things have changed. I don't know. Well, we haven't had a meeting with the, with the residents yet. When we have the residents in, these type have, of questions can be asked. Have they submitted? And we'll get, you know, you get the correct answer. They submitted a plan to the DEP with who's, who's on the hookup. So we do we have? We will, we will look into that. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, can you follow back up with me? What is, what is the exact question? Your My question is, what is your process for or your rules or your line in the sand for when you offer public sewage hookups to owners of vacant land? Like in general, are you talking about a specific property as in part of this I, process? It's in general, but I also gave you a specific example okay. of what I can. But some of that could be on a case by case basis because it, it depends on where it is. It depends on how far it is from the hookup. We, there's, there's different things. So it's not, and I'm saying there isn't like a blanket uh, statement of on vacant land, this is exactly what we do. Things are situational when it comes to sewer. So that's why I'm saying, are you talking about a specific parcel? If you are, shoot me an email, give me the address. I'll tell you if it's getting a hookup or not. It's that simple instead of being so generic, which makes it more difficult. I understand. Okay. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, any follow-up on 7-Eleven Concord Road issues, the lighting court date, the correspondences I've asked about, the uh, slab parking within 40 feet of residential, et cetera? You, do you have anything further to report? Sure, I'd be happy to uh, address 
So are you talking about your prior question from last night, um, from last month on yeah. due process, or are you uh, well, let's start with lighting. What's the status with the lighting? Is there a court date still, or does my it, understanding is progressing? My understanding is, Mr. Unfortunately, Mr. Cavadias is not here. They have re they've gotten the new poles in. I think they may have been erected, but I'm I'm not I'm not 100 percent positive of that fact. I haven't seen any poles. Okay. I believe the uh, last time I was out there, I know the footers had started getting installed. Typically, the footers get installed. You know, electrical might be 30 days trailing on that, but uh, I'll certainly look into the lighting, see where that's at. Um, what's the township's, what, why? So how did we ever get parking on that James Pool slab within 40 feet of residential, or we still don't have curb stops, or they don't have proper lighting, so how did we ever allow it to start? Mr. Goebbels, I'm going to, I'm going to answer the, the, your question this way. Um, we have been over this many times, uh, and we have provided answers to you. Now, you have also written and asked um, about the errors and emissions uh, provisions of the township's insurance policy. And when you did so, you spoke to many of these issues. You're claiming that the township has committed errors and the township has committed omissions with all the, repeatedly on all these issues you've mentioned over the last couple years. So, I will tell you that the errors and omissions applies when a claim or suit by a person or organization seeks damages because of a loss. And that claim is then be, is brought against or made against the insured, which in this case would be Concord Township and or its employees. Now, Mr. Goebel, as the township has previously expressed, uh, it is the township's opinion that there is no wrongful acts. And respectfully, you are entitled to your opinions, but you are not the designated arbiter of the truth of the facts. That is why we have judges, juries, and what is called due process. If you are asking that the township it's bring a claim against itself, if, that's, if you're asking that the township do that, the township is not going to do that. However, Mr. Goebel, you may make a claim, you may bring a suit for damages because of losses that you believe you have sustained because of wrongdoing of the township. I suggest that you put that in writing when that is received by the township, that will be passed on uh, as it should be uh, to the carrier and will be dealt with accordingly. Um, so 675 Concord Road, master locator's property, got a variance with many conditions that weren't followed. I think that's my opinion, or is that a documented fact? I've already answered that question, and I indicated that's your opinion. Okay, so I guess the analogy is if township has somebody out in a truck, they hit somebody, shouldn't stop and acknowledge it's their fault, they should, they should run and uh, see if they get sued or not. I don't, I don't understand that analogy whatsoever, but good try. Anyone else? Seeing, yes, sir. Avenue. Did I hear that our stand is being turned into a restaurant? No, no, there's a car wash wants to go there. Okay, because I saw them doing four hole samples. That they were doing I didn't know what Tom was, was yeah. I didn't know what Tom was planning on doing yeah, over yeah, there. That Tommy's is a car wash. Okay, so you're gonna take the hotel section down too? That we're right I haven't seen the final plan. I think the hotel section is staying, but that whole other side is gonna get cleaned up. I think one thing we're trying to get my cards out before we play the game. 
uh, like to define that entrance a little more. It's similar to what you have where Enterprise is, where it's like one gigantic curb cut. Yeah. To try to clean. We, we're going to have to take little bites out of that piece little by little, but this will be a first step. Okay. Okay. Because I saw it going on in there. Okay. I'm so used to when you drive into Delaware, you see the big sign saying, this is what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We got it. All right. You got it. Thank you. Moving right along in the agenda. We're into the business items, the consent agenda, and we have, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, six different uh, headings. The first would be to approve the council public meeting minutes of August 2nd. The second would be to appoint Mr. James Callahan as the building code official, zoning officer, floodplain administrator. Third would be certificates of payments number three, final to A. N. Lynch for the sewer project of $24,726.05 and releases one and two to Gessler's for the pickleball courts for $462,465. There are no financial releases. We would be accepting as complete for filing and processing the following applications. A preliminary final land development for Tommy's Car Wash at 119 Wilmington Pike. Conditional use applications for outdoor dining and liquor license transfer for Rosalie Glen Mills LLC, 919 Baltimore Pike. That is the Ruby's restaurant site. This is the same owner operator that has the White Dog Cafe. He wants to open another restaurant in that other location, wants to do outdoor dining and bring a liquor license in from another town. Dana, you have the, since you're the finance person, you have all the expenditures for the month? Sure, thank you, Mr. President. So the total expenditures is $1,220,318.22, and that consists of August payroll of $168,583.21, current bills totaling $806,155.13, and sewer bills totaling $245,579.88. And that's in a form of a motion. Okay, so that's a motion to approve everything under consent agenda. Do we have a second? Second. Yeah. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Schoolhouse Lane and Baltimore Pike improvements updates. Nate, please. Yes. Uh, so a couple brief updates. First, um, all of the signal work has been completed. So that's Cheney Road as well as Stony Bank Road. So that's operational. You'll see now the five signal heads with the flashing yellow, it's kind of a new signal head. We put some stuff out on social media the other day. That's installed and operational. So we are waiting for that to happen for the next step. The next step is to have Higgins, uh, who was the low, we sent this out to three contractors. They came in as the lowest at 18,000. That would be to install the restriction such that you will not be able to make the left coming out of schoolhouse. Um, I believe council has authorized that previously, yeah. but it probably uh, just want to update everybody tonight that as of tomorrow, we're gonna get the sign up from PennDOT, and then I'm gonna get Higgins the green light to get moving on that. Okay. Um, and then last, um, again, I think council's already authorized this, but I wanted to let you guys know tonight, we are ready and scheduled to do the survey for the deceleration lane. Uh, that's around a $10,000 cost, probably about three weeks out. So again, we're moving forward with that, but I wanted to update council tonight in case, again, anybody want me to press the pause button or, or do anything different? Okay, well, we'll keep moving forward. Keep the ball rolling, okay. Um, next item three, revocation of massage license permit, Healing Day Spa, 790 Baltimore Pike. Uh, you or Amanda, you want to give us a little background on this or what's going on? Uh, is, go ahead. Q, Simply are you stepping you, you, in or do you want me to? Well, you, you took the first phone calls, Amanda, so I'll let you handle it. <laughs> Great. <laughs> um, so uh, we were reached out to by the state police uh, who had been doing some investigation um, they're based on uh, concerns uh, that were brought to them, and they have made initial arrests, arrests rather, for um, uh, some wrongdoings. And uh, in the meantime, uh, as part of our code, uh, council has the ability to revoke their permit. They had come in recently for a renewal. Um, and with that, we do background checks, licensure, um, there's a process involved. We work with PSP on that. And uh, we will be, um, we have actually uh, posted a cease and desist there based off of the initial findings of PSP um, that we were notified immediately of. And now council has the ability to revoke uh, licensure for that applicant. Okay. 
Okay, so we are uh, revoking their license. There is uh, letters and um, uh, the delivery of the um, letter saying that they have to cease and desist. We're making it official this evening. Do we have a motion to revoke that massage license permit? I so move. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Uh, Amanda, we're going to, we have a contract here to authorize regarding the um, solicitor to finalize the contract for online tax payments. Can you just briefly? Yes, as we are residents? getting way right? cooler <laughs> and into the 21st century here with these online payments and uh, accepting uh, cards. Uh, this is a part of that process. We had discussed this about a year or two ago um, with our tax collector and the tax collector has done research and uh, is working with uh, Municipe and um, Hugh is working um, with him on contracts to make sure they are appropriate and in our best interest. Um, and uh, this authorization allows you to continue forward with those edits and finalizing with Lou on making sure that the agreement um, is best for the township. Okay, so do we have a motion to authorize the solicitor to do so? So moved. We have a second. Second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Next is resolution 36 of 2022, which is a resolution to Concord Township accepting the deed of dedication for a portion of on-site sanitary sewer facilities and easements from Ridge Road Development for the land development located um, along Ridge Road. But also, this is the um, sewers that were installed in um, Smithbridge Estates as part of that. So we have a motion to approve Resolution 36 of 2022. We have a second. We have a second. second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Um, Amanda, if you could note, I'd like to recuse myself since it has anything to do with the shops of Ridge Road. I know this is not the sword that services that, but when I read Ridge Road shops, I figure I better stay out of it. So I've done that since this thing has started 15 years ago. So please okay. note Okay, we'll let the vote that. reflect that in the minutes. Yes, okay, thank you. Uh, resolution 37 of, 220, uh, of 22 is the Keystone Grant Library upgrades. Uh, anybody from the library here? No? Amanda, that's just to help sure. them with uh, some... Uh, yeah, they're looking to um, expand a children's room area. So uh, last year, if you all recall, we um, did a grant again for this, uh, which included exterior upgrades, which they've now completed, and the children's room re renovation and expansion. So now um, that the exterior ones are done, they actually didn't get the grant last year. Um, so I'm hoping the state uh, helps them out and that they're able to get the grant this year for the children's room expansion. Okay, do we have a motion to approve that resolution? I so moved. Second. Second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, resolution 38 is uh, township credit cards. We're going through TD Bank now, Amanda. Uh, yes, we are. Uh, more advantageous for the township and our uh, finance director um, has uh, done the research and uh, said that this is the best option for us. Okay. Motion to approve. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Lastly, uh, Tom Kamita, I think you're going to show us a little presentation regarding a couple areas of the township that we have talked about doing some rezoning, uh, some along Route 322, and then some township own parcels in that same vicinity. So, uh, projector or whatever you call it these days is yours. Good evening. Thank you for inviting me. Hi, uh, Tom Kamita, C O M I T T A, uh, Township Planning Consultant since 1983. Um, my first day ever down this way of 1973, I worked at Weston, first two years of my career. My first week, I was in the mail room packaging the Concord Township Comprehensive Plan um, that was prepared by Weston in the early 70s. And so um, I have looked at several Concord Township comprehensive plans and also helped prepare them over the years. All of them had envisioned the Route 322 as an expressway. And, um, and a little um, sort of history thumbnail that I did. Um, I found Delaware County Planning Department in 1960 um, 
the Weston Plan of 1969, um, a plan that I first did with the township in 1988, an update in 2000, and in 2004. Each of the comprehensive plans said, we're mindful that Route 322 would be upgraded, uh, just be patient. So it, it kept cascading year after year and decade after decade. Now that the improvements are completed, um, a couple overarching questions. One, I guess, would be for Nate Klein. Um, the posted speed limit as you enter Concord Township on Route 322 is 45 miles an hour. <laughs> as you get closer to Concordville, it's less. So I would imagine in the next five or 10 years, the speed limit from Station Way to Route 1 would be about the same as it is on Baltimore Pike because um, of a couple things. You have Evergreen Drive, you have Station Way, um, you have Fellowship Drive, a lot more curb cuts. And um, in this stretch between Route 1 and Station Way, um, most of the land is zoned non-residential. Hunkerville Town Center, for example, is zoned PIP, Plain Industrial Park. And the um, church uh, and the hotel um, in the Hankin world um, along Fellowship um, are, is zoned uh, C2. There's also C2 at the Concordville Inn. But as you get further south at the mulch operation, which has been a non-conforming use for about 40 years, and the new PennDOT facility just north of the eastern station way, um, those are all zoned R2. And so the overarching question um, would be if Hunker Township Council were to entertain any amendments to the zoning map, that simultaneously there would be an addendum to the comprehensive plan. And it would be the first time in 60 years that the comprehensive plan would say, well, we now have Route 322 it's been built. We know what it is. The difference is on the southern two-thirds of Route 322, because of topography and land use, there's a lot of retaining walls and there's a lot of slopes um, that are holding back those walls as the road was widened. As you get to Station Way North, the topography flattens out at what's called Webb Creek and its tributary. And then it's the occasion of Evergreen and Fellowship and Station Way. So that um, the, the easy peasy concept is that a comprehensive plan addendum would identify a potential to rezone the R2 areas where the best mulch is located and the residential property just to the north of it, which would then kind of fit hand in glove with the designation for C2, commercial two, joining the West Western plus Conquerville, and then in a municipal institutional district that would be where the PennDOT maintenance facility would be located. So the question would be in the last 60 years um, in Concord Township, when zoning map first prepared and amendments thereafter, pretty much follows the existing land use or the transportation land use connection. So the idea of doing an addendum or a very mini comprehensive plan is to simply coordinate the consistency between land use transportation and zoning districts, number one, Malinowski or Mikowski. So I think what, what you're saying is based on all your years being here, um, we waited on 322 to make any zoning decisions until we got the finished product. Right. We have the finished product, and from Station Road north now, the right side of the road, we would be suggesting to rezone um, the parts that are used by PennDOT to municipal institutional. Mikowski, which is already a non-conforming commercial use to C2, 
And I think there's an orphan piece next to that between that and the Conquerville Inn Hotel. So that would be C2. So you would have commercial across from commercial. And they Correct. would only extend back to the property lines, not all the way to Concord Road. Correct. And okay. the practice with the, the Township Council has been over the years, when there is an institutional type property like PennDOT um, and, and the other properties that are currently zoned M slash I municipal institutional, mm -hmm. that it then fits hand in glove with that. Okay. I think the other part of this was that we were um, looking at some township owned properties around the sewer plant. And maybe if you could pull that up. Well, yeah, I mean, I think the question, or I guess my, my suggestion with the council would be is if, if we're going to go forth with this type of effort that's going to require hearings and addendums, et cetera, with all the various open space acquisitions and, and, and projects we've had over the past three or four years, it might also be appropriate to, you know, look at those types of properties that might be zoned all various types of zoning districts and then make those properties MI as well. So as, as we proceed with the, you know, the parks or the trails, we don't run into those kind of cumbersome zoning questions that might be appropriate to look at those. So on the screen right now, we have the sewer plant property, which, you know, you can see the sewer plant from 322, but it actually, in Cape, I think it's over 35 acres of a multiple zoning districts. So this might be a good candidate for that same conversion to an MI type use, which it already is. So that would be just my suggestion to the council and Tom, is that if we're gonna do this effort that takes time and, and money, maybe we just grab some of those other obvious kind of no-brainer MI ones as well to go along with it. And I also think we recently, with the purchase of the uh, property on um, Concord Road, when we just, yeah, uh, we, when we carved that up to sell the historic house off, we took about three or four acres off of that and annexed it to the sewer plant. The sewer plant now, I think over the last 10 years has probably brought another 12 to 15 acres of ground contiguous to it uh, as it became available. I think the township's thought was if you have a sewer plant, you probably ought to own as much stuff as you can around it. But as Nate said, with trails coming through and things of that nature, if it's zoned municipal institutional, that would give us a lot more flexibility in the future using it for other municipal purposes other than just sewage treatment. So um, I don't know what everybody thinks. If they think this is something we want to mm -hmm. schedule a hearing for, we just don't make this decision tonight. The properties would have to be posted. Ordinances would have to be advertised. Be a public hearing in this room where public comment will be taken. And Tom will probably do a more in-depth uh, presentation. And then council will decide whether they want to go ahead with these rezonings. But if you really think about the properties on 322, the only one that is not used that no longer wants to be used as residential. There is only one house that is considered to be rezoned to commercial. And if you ever drive there, it's the lot that's between the hotel entrance and the Mikowski uh, setup. It sits up on a hill. In fact, it has a sale sign on it now. Everything else there is being used as a non-residential use. So this would just clean up that section of 322. Nate, the Township Sewer Authority property, does it extend all the way up to Fellowship Drive or is there another property in between those two? There, there is another property. Uh, the sewer property ends um, goes to the creek, essentially. It's hard to tell on this aerial map, but not all the way to Fellowship. SEPTA owns actually some property in between. And that would be rezoned as well? Uh, you know, SEPTA might be, again, that's potentially trail location. It's kind of an obvious MI type use as well. So that was really where that parking lot is across from Milgren A, if you could picture that. So um, again, I think what we would do is I, I think we brainstormed some of those properties and, and we present a map that clarifies and shows that and we can have that discussion at more length. And may, may I add one other thing, whatever direction council <clears throat> decides to go, uh, I think we should update our official zoning map to reflect these changes. Uh, yes. All my colleagues are in concurrence. We would ask Amanda to probably check our schedules to advertise for a hearing yep. sometime in September or October. It yep. will be on the website. It will be posted on the properties. And we'll probably be on an off Tuesday night, not the first Tuesday in a month. And uh, we'll come back and we'll vet this uh, at a public meeting as we are required to do. And then take action on it accordingly. I, I would, I would, Mr. I would President, suggest, I move yeah. that we uh, um, authorize advertisement of a zoning hearing okay, with, re with regard to I'll such effect. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 aye.
That being it, we have a motion to adjourn. Mr. Tucker, please don't go away. I've got to talk to you about something. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Come, aye. Thank you for coming out tonight. Good meeting. Thank you, Tom.